Let's talk about angle bisectors. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two adjacent angles whose measures are equal. For example, in this diagram, I see angle ABC, this whole angle, and I see ray BD in the middle of it. The two angles that were created when BD cut angle ABC are these two 55 degree angles, angle ABD and angle DBC. Since these two angles have the same measure, that means that angle ABC was bisected, it was cut in half. And the thing that cut it in half was this ray, ray BD. Angle bisectors are basically the same idea as a segment bisector, or a midpoint, except we're talking about angles instead of segments. Now segments we can mark as being congruent with little tick marks on the congruent segments. But for marking angles as being congruent, we use these little arcs. So since angle ABD and angle DBC have the same arc, I can tell that they're congruent. Even if I wasn't told that they were both 55 degrees, if the only thing I had on the diagram were these two arcs as my only labels, that would still be enough information to conclude that those two angles were congruent and that therefore BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC. So in our first example, I want us to analyze this diagram and fill in these blanks. Blank is the angle bisector of blank. In other words, what's the name of the ray that cut an angle in half, and what's the name of the angle that got cut in half? Well, the ray that cut angle WXY in half is this one right here. You do have to call it XZ. Remember that to name a ray, you start at the end point and go to some other point on the ray. So I have to start at X and then go to Z, calling it ray ZX would be incorrect because that would imply that you're starting at Z and going to X and beyond with an arrow going down, and that's not what I see. So I have to call this ray XZ, and it's the angle bisector of angle WXY. WXY is the entire angle. It was cut into two 81 degree angles by ray XZ. Our next example, instead of numbers labeling my angles, I have these two arcs labeling my angles. Remember that we just discussed that that's how you can label two angles as being congruent to each other. So the angle that got cut in half, or bisected, is angle PQR. The entire angle got cut in half, got cut into these two congruent angles, by this ray. And again, be careful with how you name that ray. It's tempting to call it SQ because we read from left to right, but that would imply that I'm starting at point S and going to Q and beyond, but I'm not. I'm starting at point Q and going to S and then beyond. So I have to list Q first and then S in the name of my ray, and angle PQR or angle RQP would be the correct answer for the second blank. Okay, so let's use some angle bisectors to calculate missing angle measures. For example, if I know that ray FH is the angle bisector of EFG, I could use that information to figure out the measures of each of the angles created by the angle bisector. Remember that this kind of arc, this one single arc with a number attached to it, that doesn't have anything to do with congruence, that has to do with labeling an angle that's comprised of more than one angle. So since this arc starts here on ray FE and ends over here on ray FG, that implies that it's angle EFG that measures 172 degrees. Well, to figure out the two smaller angles, I know they have to be the same thing, I just don't know what it is yet. I could call both of them X then, and I know that I can add X and X and get a total of 172. In other words, 2X equals 172, so if I divide both sides by 2, I get my answer of 86. Now you might be wondering, wait a second Mrs. Goforth, couldn't I have just divided 172 by 2 because it got cut in half? Absolutely, that's exactly what you just did using this math. This I just set up an equation to do it. So if you didn't see at the outset that you're just supposed to divide 172 by 2, then I would suggest labeling your diagram with some variables and setting up an equation to solve. Let's try another one. KM is the angle bisector of angle JKL. 
So what are the measures of angle MKL and JKL? This time I'm told the measure of one of the angles created by the angle bisector, instead of the measure of the angle that was bisected. That allows me to conclude that angle MKL, the other angle created by the angle bisector, must also be 42 degrees. If KM cut JKL in half, then these two angles have to be the same. Well, to figure out the measure of the entire angle, I would need to add those two 42 degree angle measures together. So the measure of angle JKL must be 84 degrees. Our next example is basically the same thing, except with algebraic expressions instead of just numbers. So since I know that DF is the angle bisector of CDE, DF cut CDE in, in half, that means that these two algebraic expressions must be the same thing. So that means I can set them equal to each other. So I've got 17x minus 22 equals 12x plus 3, because these two angles created by this angle bisector have to be the same measure. So now I'll just solve. Subtract 12x from both sides, add 22, and divide by 5. But you'll notice it didn't ask what is x, it asked for the angle measures, so I need to plug 5 in to figure out what each of these angle measures are. So I can do 17 times 5 minus 22, and I'll also do 12 times 5 plus 3. Both of those are going to give me an answer of 63. And then to figure out the measure of the entire angle, I can just add those two 63 degree angle measures together and get to the total angle measure of 126 degrees. I want you to go ahead and try this next example on your own. It's very similar to the one that we just accomplished together, so go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. Okay, let's see how you did. Since I know HJ is the angle bisector of GHI, that allows me to conclude that 7x must be equal to 5x plus 16, because these two angles have to be the same measure because they were created by an angle bisector. So I've got 7x equals 5x plus 16. I'll subtract 5x from both sides and divide by 2 to figure out that x equals 8. So to figure out the three missing angle measures, I'm going to need to plug 8 into x here and here. 7 times 8 would be 56. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 16 is also 56. And the measure of angle GHI, the entire angle, can be calculated by adding those two 56 degree angle measures together, which means angle GHI is 112 degrees. What if I don't tell you that it's an angle bisector? What if I ask you to tell me whether it is or isn't? Maybe BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC, or maybe it's not. How could you prove that it is? Well, if BD is the angle bisector, I would know that these two angles have to be equal to each other. Angle ABD and angle DBC would have to be equal. So let's set them equal and see if they are or not. Let's see if I get something true when I set up that equation and solve. So I'm going to set up 5x plus 4 equal to 44. Let's see what we get. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides and divide by 5, and I get x equals 8. Well, in order for BD to be the angle bisector, that must mean that angle ABD is also 44 degrees. So if I plug 8 into this algebraic expression, do I get 44? Well, 5 times 8 is 40, and then add 4 to it, yeah, I get 44. So angle ABD is 44, and angle DBC is 44, so that allows me to conclude that BD must be the angle bisector of angle ABC. That's one way to prove that BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC. You might have thought of doing it a different way, because you might have noticed we didn't use this 9x plus 16 at all. And you didn't have to, but you could if you wanted to do it in a different way. Another way to show that BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC would be to set up 5x plus 4 plus 44 and set that equal to 9x plus 16. So basically we're using the angle addition postulate. Our goal in the end is going to be the same, that once we know x, we're going to plug it in and see if I get 44 and 44. 
So let's go ahead and solve this equation. I've got a couple of like terms I can combine. 4 and 44 is 48. Then I can subtract 5x from 9x to get 4x. Then I'll subtract 16 from 48 to get 32. And I'll divide both sides by 4 to get 8. So like what we saw before, if I plug 8 into 5x plus 4, I get ABD being equal to 44 degrees. Therefore, like we said on the previous method of solving, ray BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC. So that's all you need to know about angle bisectors. In our next lesson, we're going to be exploring some more angle pair relationships.